started? All right, well, if we could go around and just introduce yourselves for the camera. My name is Andy Irv. Murray Cunningham. Charlotte Pine. Julia Hawk. All right. Now, uh, do all three of you know Dutch, Pennsylvania Dutch? No? Charlotte does. I know a little bit, not much. Skitters. <laughs> we know skitters. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of uh, sayings do you know, Charlotte? Tell you about a poodle dog. You want to hear? Yeah. He hopped on the poodle pot. She sent his wife to work. They come to all the inside and fought the poodle dog. So I cut wops, I swatch wops, I bop off the shop. He caught the man that come inside. My poodle was stout and fought. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, now, what all does that mean? He's at home. Now, now, what all did you say there in English? I had a little poodle dog, was spotted red and white. Uh, I came an old engine and ran over the dog. His tail, or his head was off, his tail was off, and his belly was all scratched. He couldn't believe it that his dog was dead and gone. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, I see you have something in your hand there. Is yeah. that, uh, do you want to so, tell us something about that? Well, this is from the soap factory. That was out here at the, yeah, it's our, I have two pictures of Castillo, it was called. Yeah. It's, there was a factory out there, you remember? That there, was, there were three factories out yeah. there. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was the middle one. Yeah. The middle one. That was the middle one. Okay. What was in the top one? It was the top one. Yeah. I think that was furniture. I'm not sure. There was, there was a couple different businesses in it, though. There was a feed mill in it, and I forget what the other one was. Well, the middle one was a, a lumber yard was in there one time. It was a theater. A theater? What for lumber yard? A uh, ritter. Well, what was in the bottom building? That long one that's down there. Yeah. That used to be a uh, they, they, silk mill, I guess. A silk mill, and then it was. Uh, I've never heard that. They made during the war. They made. Uh, Army cots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think my mother said they made brooms in it at one time. How many people did they? And then the first playhouse was there. How many people did they have working at the soap factory? What? Do you have any idea how many people worked at the soap factory? Was it a pretty big concern? Hundred people? Oh, I don't know. It was how big it was. But my mother worked there. She told me. Yeah. The third building that was one closest up to the Dean grounds, that was a furniture factory at one time. And who had the furniture factory? I have no idea. Was it up at the intersection there at the Bean Soup? On the front of the playhouse? No. No, the playhouse. You know where the playhouse was? Yeah. The yellow yeah. building? There's three right along through there, all the same size. Do you, any of you know anything about the village of Lowell? What can you tell us about Lowell? That was over there by, uh, where you turn off the main road and go down 
tube it for you. I don't know how to tell you. Over there where Claire Gossin in there. Yeah. Where, where those Gossins. Those My granddad there. lived there at one time. Happy, Happy Gossin lived there. Yeah, it's close to where he mm -hmm. lived when he passed away. It's down in that section. Mm -hmm. There's a couple houses there. They're right across the road from each other. There's the two houses, and then I guess you go a little farther, and there's mm -hmm. a couple more houses. That's what it was used to call little. Now, it, it used to have a post office, correct? I couldn't tell you. I don't know that. Now, were, were all three of you... Uh, Originally from McClure? I'm not. I was. Well, I came to McClure, I guess, about when I was four years old. I was born up in close to Middle East. Where were, where were you originally from? Illinois. Illinois. Moved here in 28. Seven years old. Hmm. I think that merits to be called McClureites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, log the log shoot. What can you tell us about the log shoot? Only what people told me about it. It said they used to they had long spikes. Back in the thirties I, I could trace that up the mountain. You could find them. There's spikes about that long. They drive it halfway into the ground. They'd peel a log up on top of the mountain, slide it down. So far, it, it stopped. There's about, you know where the, if anybody knows where the McClure water tank is in now, it was just about 150 feet west of there. That's where it would stop. And that where they stopped was later the McClure Water Supply Company. They had a pond there. But didn't it actually take the dogs clear downtown? I don't know if that if it, if it ever done that. Yeah, it did. Yeah, because they say about how it came down through and down through the woods here and it ended up where Harold Pheasant used to mm -hmm. have his planing mill. I didn't I didn't know that. Did you ever see the wooden structure of it? Well the long and the shoot was all rotten, so I found there all all the the rotten logs and spikes. Spikes. But it was made actually out of logs instead of boards. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, in some of our former discussions here, they said when they put a log in there and it would come down through, you could hear it clear over in Vanderbilt. I couldn't say. Anything yeah. about that? Well, uh, I'm just adding to it. Until <laughs> I got here, it was, you might say, completely gone. Yeah. And they only used them, what, four months or something like that? Not long. Uh, it's longer than that, and they already. It was erected for like a year. It stayed up for a year, and then after that, they tore it down oh, okay. to the foot of the mountain, and then they just left the other part to the top rot right away. Okay. I, uh, I have a small article on the wood shoot. It was a man by the name of Mr. Warwick. He worked on Shade Mountain and gave his lunch bucket to a fellow worker and came down the mountain in the wooden chute. He arrived at the bottom minus his clothing and a badly bruised body. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> that not too smart. <laughs> What did you do as you were growing up in McClure to entertain yourselves? Played hide and seek, hopscotch, kick the wicket. And what do you mean by that? What? Kick the wicket. What? You said, you said a stick up in a pole or somewhere and you kick it. See, I thought you can kick it. We used to roll hoops. You take those big iron hoops and you know, and you put a nail in a stick and you just roll your hoop. Yeah, back in them days, trucks, on the tire, they had a ring that ran around. Uh -huh. Some of them had a solid ring. 
That's what she's talking about, putting the nail in. Oh, we played soccer, baseball, stuff like that. Fish. Roller skate. Where did you go to fish? In the creek up here? Yeah. That used to be a good creek. Over there where, that's the, the Minimark, where it goes under the creek. We used to catch eels in there. They haven't been there now for 30, 40 years, 50 years. What did you do for fun, Julia? Well, I was a girl. <laughs> yeah, we didn't go fishing. I, I don't know what we, what we did when we were kids. Played hide and go seek, I know, and they used to play red light and things like you. that. <laughs> That's what. Red bicycle, I guess. <laughs> Do you guys remember the, the shirt factory? Yep. Yes. What can you tell us about the shirt factory? Burnt down. Burnt down. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in the 60s, right? 61. Well, Henry Nepps, when I remember, I, moved, I lived next door to the shirt factory. And when I lived there, Henry Nepps mm -hmm. run the factory. And they lived on the second floor. And the factory was on the first floor. And after a while they, I don't know whether they moved away or what, but the, then they had the factory moved up to the second floor too. So when I worked there, it was, both floors were occupied with machinery. Yes, Sam Bubb Sam owned it. Yep. And and Sam, charge of it. Yep. Sam Bubb was the head guy then. Now, when when was the last time the uh, train went through town? Fifty-six. Fifty-six. Oh my word! I wouldn't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> now, what we're trying to do with our new book is try to f figure out stuff from 1967 till now. So, what could you tell us has changed since the 60s? You read that something. I thought you were going to ask something over. <laughs> Growing up in, in McClure, did, did you have any harrowing experiences that you could share with us? Well, down on Walton Railroad Street, the Sherman Good used to be a tool teacher here in town. He stole a bunch of his chairs, put them in the rail cars. The car across the track in front of the house. He wound up down the ceiling. Almost in the Philly before they found him. Okay. So that, was that a Halloween prank? That was a Halloween prank. <laughs> now there was how many bars in town at one time? Two. One. Two. Bars. Bars. The, the hotel was one. And uh, Bill Brandinger's. Well, that was a, that was a bucket of blood. Well, that was a bar. <laughs> there used to be one there in uh, down here in the alley. Uh, well, well, that's what you call it. That's what Baker, we're Baker, uh, Mrs. Baker owned it. Yeah. If Dorothy Baker and uh, Brian, Tom Brandinger turned a one-car garage into into a bar room. If you had a nickel, somebody died in it. Remember? No. But if you had a nickel, you might be 14 years old if you went by a bear. If you had a nickel. <laughs> now, with with the railroad, I hear stories that during bean soup time, the drunks would stumble up to bean soup. And and what happened? Well, my relation, not so much because I wasn't, for a long time I wasn't in town. But it used to be a hotel in town. They had a bar and a restaurant and stuff. If they got drunk, they put them in a railroad car, in the railroad tracks, empty, lock them up there to 
until the next day and he sobered up and then he could go home. That was just during bean soup week. Yeah. yeah. But they had plenty of drunks otherwise. <laughs> yeah, from 42, by 42, the end of December 45, I wasn't here. From 50 to 70, I wasn't here. Well, there's somebody that killed on them. Well, I don't know if they got killed on the railroad, but you remember that his, his body was on the railroad yeah. in I, pieces, and they took him, they brought him, and put him in the station house down here. Yeah. And his last name was Chauver. Chauver, yeah. See, well, let me see. Well, how did he get killed? They didn't do that. I don't think they ever figured it out right. But they thought killed. somebody put his body there, and the train just ran over. Oh. And he's cut up in pieces. So he was dead before he was on the train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you know where Bob Rigger lives, there used to be, there's one house there now. There used to be two houses. The other house, Snyder, some Snyder families lived in there. They was having a card party. And when this chopper left for some reason or other, they followed his tracks down through. Just a little bit past Walmart, not Walmart, uh, Walmart. Loser, Loser, on the railroad track. Mm -hmm. They found him the, the next morning. His head was cut with the train track and his legs was cut off. Their head had been stretched across the railroad tracks. Nobody knows how he got there. He, he jumped over, a, and he was barefooted, but he jumped over a fence and landed on a cactus. <laughs> He must have been drunk, huh? I would say so. <laughs> they never did solve that problem. Do you guys have any stories that you can think of off the top of your head? I know, uh, what about the different schools? There was something called Hog How or Hall yeah, College? Was, yeah. Hall yeah. oh, College. Right from, our, from where we arrived, there was right in the middle of the road where yeah, the road was. It was right in the middle of the road. And there was no there was no road up to it. But we lived in one side and Murray Snyder lived in the other side. And we used to keep all the grass mowed and everything and took sides and put in the grass and they kept um, well, toward last they had the the uh, hose cart, hose cart in it, and that building is still down there beside the where Sherman's house is, the Bluebird Inn. That's the building that sat there, and they called it the Hogarth College because there was pigs, <laughs> pig pens all around there on both sides of it. In other school, words, the street school. going down through here didn't exist, so it was between where Charlotte lived and Snyder's, right in the middle of the street is where it was at, mm -hmm. at one time. And the house you're talking about is on the other side of where you live, Dan McCarroll's house, is yeah. that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Originally that building was a, was a grade school. Oh. Yeah. Before they built a new high school, which they tore down. Yes, it was a school because I remember my sister mm -hmm. went there. Well, that that the region had been across the road there. I don't remember the names of the streets, but it was set in Caddy Corner. It was moved, and Peter put a house in there. There now. And that's not where the whole, the schoolhouse sat, though. The no. schoolhouse sat right in the middle of where the road is now. Either you're talking about the house you lived in. Mm -hmm. What? But what was that? What was where H. W. Heater built? What was that? That was, was, a, that was Johnny Snyder's a lot that Johnny Snyder owned. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. but I thought he said something. I thought he said something was sitting there where H. W. built. Well, that had been that ha that house that next to her house between her house and the next one was an empty spot. And this 
middle grade school was sitting catty cornered across the lot. They moved that over between alongside of her house. I don't know. Do you remember that, Charlotte, at all? I don't think it was catty corner, though. It was straight. It was right where the road is now. There You're was a... talking about Hoghouse College, though. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And He's there used to be, about... for, for years, there was a big block of cement there where it, uh, where this set on, and, and uh, when they put this ball diamond or the grandstand up, they took that sand, or that, cement and stuff out. But that was set right in the middle of the road that... Uh, I think you're talking about two different schools, aren't you? Huh? You're talking about two different places, aren't you? No, not two different kind of schools. There was only one school there yeah. until yeah. they built the big one. Yeah. yeah but at one time, it, why did they call it Hog House College? Who Cause went to... the hog pens. It was, well, a, but, hog, it was a hog <laughs> pen, yeah. But who went to school there when they called it that? Well, I know my sister was one of the pupils that was there. But that was grade school, you said, was in at one time. Yeah. But weren't older kids ever in that building? High school. Why did they call it college? <laughs> I don't know why they called was it Was it always a grade school? Is that what you're telling us? As, as far as I know, it was always a grade school. I don't know. It wasn't a grade school when I went. I went down to the World Fire Hall. Was I went to the grade school. Yeah. That's where that's where the school started. I don't think it was only one year that they had a school there. Down here in the college. Yeah, isn't that what they called the Hog House College? But I think it was people. older people that went. Yeah, it must have been because my sister went and I remember that. And that was before the new building was built. Yeah. Well, how old was she, Julia, when she went there? Was she young or older? I don't remember that. <laughs> it seems to me Carl Fizz was the teacher. I don't know, uh, he probably talked to seventh or eighth grade. Seven, sixth, sixth grade. Sixth grade. Oh, no, 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 pardon me. Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Elder Reader was seventh. Ferguson, uh, seventh grade. Ferguson was sixth grade. Well, what uh, grades went down to the fair hall in that building? You mean uh, later on? Well, whenever. When Dolores went down to the fair. Yeah, in fourth down grade there. we went down there. But when you were going, when you were a kid. I went to first grade. The, old, the kids all went down there to the fair hall when I went. But how many years did I you go I only went there? one year, but, but some of them went more than that. I went to a third grade down there. Yeah. Okay. And then fourth grade we built the new one in 1928. But is third grade as high as you could go down there? I thought older kids went there too. Don't we? Yeah, ask? there was. There they went to high school because yeah, I know they one did time I was sent up to the principal one, and that was the principal of it's on the second floor, mm -hmm. and he was a uh, Ori Wagner. Ori Wagner, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he was principal of the high school, and he was upstairs. Yeah. They had they had great schools downstairs, and I thought it was the whole the whole yeah. Yeah. one through twelve. But did it actually go to twelve, or what was yeah. high school? Our, when did they stop? Our brother graduated there in 1935. In twelfth grade. Yes. Oh, okay. I think there are some existing pictures of some of those people. I think my mother's on a picture that she went down there for high school or something before they built the new school here. I don't know what grade she was in, but... Uh, but I bet your dad traveled the train to get his, his second year of high school, didn't it? Because my dad did. You mean down at Trust my hair or something? No, they went to Melbourne. Oh, no, my dad did, but Uncle Michael did. Okay. Yeah. They, they had to travel down there to get the last yeah. year. Yeah, Sherman Good was down there too. That's where they learned to know him. Mm -hmm. Do you guys uh, remember how you celebrated uh, Memorial Day services when you were kids? Right, frankly, no. 
I remember. We, we went used, to the cemetery. Yeah, we all we gathered always, there someplace yeah. and had far. Kids get they gathered down at the down the lower street. It's, all at the, the school house. Marched out to the cemetery with their flowers and decorated all the graves. And, and, yep, I remember that now. Yep, that's what we did that when we were kids. Did you? Uh, did they have honor guards? I mean. Yeah. Well, they had somebody to yeah. lead us because they'd tell us where the, each grave was that we would put a flower on mm -hmm. as we went along. Yeah, and there wasn't two or three kids either then, was it? No, was there wasn't a few kids. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot. I'd say half, half the kids was, was there. Yeah, we had all kind of kids. At least. Yeah, we actually did that too. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember if we met at one place or they kind of picked us up as they went out through the street there. Did, did civic organizations do things like have Easter egg hunts and things like that? A couple, uh, the church I went to had, used to have them. Easter egg hunts. Not the rest of them. Our church had, did two that I went to at first. Our had egg hunts and things. Yeah, sometimes I can't think of something and somebody mentioned something that brings it <laughs> back. You know, I know a lot about this town that a lot of people probably don't know. Well, that's why you're here. <laughs> well, you kind of cut me off when you said 67 to now. And this is all way before 67. Well, we'll take those stories, too. <laughs> <laughs> we aren't going to be picky. Okay. <clears throat> you know the Bank of McClure? Yeah. Those apartment buildings right now? They have two robs. Two, it was robbed two times. One time back in the 30s, mm -hmm. they found out about it from somebody up in Canada called them about it. And in back, I think in the 70s, some guy... Put, pasted stuff all over his face around the bank. He wrecked the car get, trying to get away and he got caught. I think you tell me about that. Was it a fox? Yeah, a fox. That was yeah. Beaver Springs Bank who they robbed. No, they also robbed the McClure Bank. Bobby. Bobby. Bobby Fox. Bobby Fox. Bobby Fox. I have oh, do you think by hell that's recent? It was some of your relative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not my relative. 1926. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is 1926, the bank robbery in the floor. So as you were growing up, if you were going if you were courting somebody or somebody was courting you, what what are some of the things that you you did as a couple? Well, when I was growing up, I didn't. <laughs> I what made that? Actually, I didn't. Well, that's okay. We got a little place, a little fifty-acre farm. Half of it was open. After school, we got pulling corn, potatoes, whatnot. We grew all our 90% of our food was grown on that little farm. So he didn't have time to do anything. Then when I graduated out of high school, I got a job in Baltimore, Maryland. 20 years old. Working on making airplanes. Got drafted out of the, into the Army. That was in 40, 42. I come back in uh, for, December 45. So I, all, all that time, at home, I never dated anybody. Where were you? Where, where were you stationed during the service? During your service? England, France, Germany. July forty-two to December forty-five. I come out, worked out the garage in the floor. Five years later, I went back in the service, retired in 70. Now, which garage? Well, we had one, only had one there in town. 
What was the name of it? White, White Mary, Mary Ewing. Ewing. Chrysler Plymouth. Well, before they moved into that building where the Mini Mart is now, it had been over in town. Was had a, under the Grange Hall. Was it over the corner? Right in the corner. Yeah, the, the corner. But over Carol Longman's house. Uh huh. That's right. There's a house over there.